and welcome to Learn System View in 5 Minutes. This is tutorial 18 where we will talk about how to probe intermediate nodes in your RF system design and how can we manage the noise flow display in our plots. So we'll pick up our simulation uh, from where we left over in the last tutorial video where we talked about different budget analysis, plotting different data, managing the properties. Now, let's me go ahead and close all the windows so we can go to windows, close all, and it frees up the entire screen space. Now I can double click on design one to open the schematic again. Now in this case, uh, let's assume we want to probe the, the intermediate points. So till now we have only looked at our output spectrum at the output node by simply right clicking at new graph and we added a power plot. But what if I would like to see what happens after mixer, what happens after filter and so on? How can we probe that? Now, if you refer to my introductory video on, on RF system simulator basics, remember we talked about output uh, tab here. Now in output tab, uh, you notice it's system view by default is saving data at any, each and every node. That means before simulation, you don't need to define where exactly you would like to do measurements and all that. Like in some tools, you need to define the wire labels or put a power probe or a current probe, etc., to do those measurements. System view does that all by default. Now let's see how can we plot the data at this mixer output. Well, you can simply right click on the on the node. So remember, so you are in this mixer simply right click on the node which we where you want to plot the data and when that come the option comes you will have add new graph and then you can select new power plot and this system power data is at node 4 and this is where you can see a lot more spectral content at the output of mixer now in order to make sure that indeed this is a power remember this node 4 is this data now, if you want to see what impact this filter does on this spectrum, we can simply right click on this filter node, add a new graph, and we can add a new power plot. And you can see, you can put them side by side. So let me close this schematic and let's dial it vertically. And notice at node four and node six, how the performance is changing because of the filter. You can see a lot more spurious products here, but filter coming into action, those are spurious levels are, are down quite a bit. So this way your system probing at any node is very, very easy to maintain. Now, again, we remember we talked about having right disciplines. So this one, let's do it, um, you know, some renaming. So we call it CNF, uh, node four is our mixer output. Let's call it mixer output and finally, this graph is our filter output, so let's call it PPF output. So by using this discipline from the very beginning makes your job much easier. Now many a times few designers are perplexed with these noise floors and why there are two noise floors. How can I only see spectrum and not seeing noise floors? So let's talk about uh, some of those. Now again in your uh, system design, you could go to the calculate piece and remember we have this thermal noise calculation on. So if you don't want to see this noise floor, I can remove this calculate thermal noise. Now, if you go ahead and simulate, you can notice there is no, no noise floor you know, defined here. Now, if the text on X axis is looking a little weird and that's because it's in megahertz, so you can go ahead and set the X axis to be in gigahertz and hopefully it will be cleared up. But because of precision and the graph is squeezed and as said X direction, you'll still have few overlapping. But once you make this graph bigger, you can see the text properly anyway. So now if you want to see the noise floor, but then question is how do we control the noise floor? So let's go and reactivate the noise. Now the noise floor uh, content or noise floor level is basically controlled by your resolution bandwidth. So refer to your spectrum analyzer fundamentals. And the way uh, we can control that in system view is by defining the measurement bandwidth. So if I change this measurement bandwidth to maybe 0 0.001 megahertz, which is one kilohertz, notice what happens to these floors, which is currently around minus 123 and around minus 140 
you know, DBM. If you run the simulation again, notice the noise floor comes down. As it happens in your spectrum analyzer, you keep reducing the resolution bandwidth, the noise floor goes down and down. But the good point about system view is it still shows you the products which are below the noise floor, unlike instruments which will, you know, mask everything which is below the noise floor. So that's some more basics for you. Hopefully it will help you when you start probing your system um, at various nodes and to control the noise uh, display on your screens. Thanks very much for watching the tutorial.